Hey everyone, it's Cannabis Nurse Sherry from The Green Nurse, and it's Terpene Tuesday here at In the Weeds Prohibition Talk Radio. What is a terpene? Good question. Terpenes are organic compounds that produce specific smells and tastes. They're found in cannabis, essential oils, plants, trees, and foods. In cannabis, the terpenes help ward off attacks from animals, insects, and fungus during the growth cycle of the plant. When a cannabis plant grows through the curation process, the terpenes become oxidized, resulting in what we know as terpenoids. Terpenes contribute to the entourage effect and have their own healing properties. The entourage effect, a theory by Dr. Ethan Russo, suggests that utilizing cannabinoids and terpenoids together produces a more potent medicinal effect rather than using the isolated compound alone. Another way of saying that is the whole of the plant is greater than its individual parts. This week we're going to be talking about beta caryophylline, one of my favorite terpenes. beta caryophylline is a cisquaterpene that binds with CB2 receptors. Cisquaterpenes have three isoprene units, while monoterpenes have two isoprene units. The scent of beta caryophylline is described as being spicy, peppery, with a strong, warm, wooden aroma and an undertone of citrus. Some people have described the smell of cloves and cinnamon. And it's not uncommon for beta caryophylline to be a predominant terpene in cannabis. Natural sources of beta caryophylline include black pepper, grains of paradise, basil, cinnamon, caraway, cloves, hops, and cotton. Beta caryophylline has been described as a colorless and slightly oily liquid that has been approved by the FDA as a food additive for human consumption. So beta caryophylline is not just exclusive to cannabis. It has preservative properties and is found in the hops that flavor and stabilize beer. It has been used as a flavoring agent in gum to get that citrusy or spicy flavor. And it's been used in detergents and topical skin products. Now we're gonna summarize beta caryophylline effects and the medicinal potential. Beta caryophylline modulates the immune system. It's an immunomodulator. So what that means is it may dial up or dial down the immune response, depending upon what a patient needs. It acts as an anti-inflammatory, decreasing inflammation, which can provide pain relief. It acts as an analgesic, decreasing pain through the anti-inflammatory process, and it's a potent, potent pain reliever for neuropathic pain. It's a neuroprotective. It works to protect nerve cells. It helps with seizures, epilepsy, and it induces neurogenesis, which is the recreation of new neurons in the brain. It may help protect from Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia. It may be beneficial in cases of colitis and irritable bowel. It's an antibacterial known for its effects against tuberculosis, leprosy, Staphylococcus aureus, and Pseudomonas. It's an antifungal known to work with Candida albicans and Aspergillus. It may be protective against type two diabetes. It may have anti-cancer properties and has been known to work with kidney, colon, pancreatic, melanoma, and lymphoma. It may produce a synergistic effect with certain chemotherapy agents, meaning that the chemotherapy and the terpenoids can work in synergy together to help fight the cancer. It's an antioxidant. It prevents the cells from oxidative stress. And I look at oxidative stress as rusting. It may protect against binge drinking or chronic alcoholic induced steatohepatitis, non-fatty liver disease and fatty liver diseases. So to quickly review all of the medicinal effects, it acts as a antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antifungal, anti-tumor, analgesic, neuroprotectant, and a potent protector and analgesic for the gastrointestinal tract. Beta caryophylline and other cannabinoids do increase the therapeutic potential. For example, THC and beta caryophylline can enhance gastric cell protection. Beta caryophylline and CBD can cause an enhanced anti-inflammatory effect. Beta caryophylline studies. There are 80 total studies. 
66 primary, 14 related, and out of those 80, only three of the studies are double-blind human trials. Beta-caryophylline has shown proven effects in clinical human trials for bacterial infections, menstrual pain and associated conditions, nicotine dependence, and withdrawal. The top studies related to beta-caryophylline include oxidative stress, Parkinson's disease, colitis, melanoma, generalized pain, inflammation, bacterial infections, stroke, and the top four organs that it has been studied are the nervous system, the immune system, the digestive system, and the integumentary system. Cannabis strains that are high in beta-caryophylline include Tickle Kush, SPVOG, Super Lemon Haze, Sherbert Breath, Bubba Kush, OG Kush, Master Kush, Chemdog, Sour Diesel, Rockstar, Skywalker OG, Candyland, Death Star, Original Glue, Cookies and Cream, and Gelato. It has been noted that many of the cookie strains are high in beta caryophylline. That's it for today, Terpene Tuesday at In the Weeds, Prohibition Talk Radio. You can also catch Nurse Mark and the Green Nurse Daily Dose podcast every morning, Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. on the Green Nurse. Nurse Mark and I present Canna Talk weekly at In the Weeds, Prohibition Talk Radio. So please be sure to join us this Wednesday and every Wednesday from 4.20 to 6.20 p.m. at In the Weeds, Prohibition Talk Radio.